Nine minutes after 11 o'clock, doing a Tuesday talk show, doubleheader. My guest this hour, Jerry Shirk, former NFL great, and uh, does a lot of interesting things these days as well. We'll get to that in a moment. Well, Jerry, welcome back. And I want to ask you, uh, I mean, from a from the standpoint of a kid, Grants Pass raised and graduating from Grants Pass High and Oklahoma State wrestling, playing football and all that, what was it like? to realize that uh, you're on the fast track to be drafted by the Cleveland Browns. What, that was uh, about 19, what, 69 and 70, right? Right, right. Um, it was tremendously, well, it was exciting. And it was also a bit frightening because you know that there was always that chance of failure. And, and failure uh, to an athlete, I mean, it just looms big and it motivates you. And you just wonder if you're going to be one of those almost Cinderella stories and going to be a big flop. So going into Cleveland my rookie year, you know, I even though I was a second-round draft choice, I didn't know if I was going to make it. And I did feel like a country kid in a big city. I mean, I lived in Grants Pass. I lived in Aberdeen, Washington. I lived in Stillwater, Oklahoma. You know, once I was in a city with, you know, a million or two million people and uh, ready to to kind of step on the stage of national television. So it was exciting and frightening. You know, i got to tell you, looking back on my uh, lousy football career, I, I remember there were certain levels where the hitting increased big time. Was it was it that way? Was the hitting in the pros harder than it was at the collegiate level? And if so, how much harder? It was, it was, a, it was a, lot, a lot harder. <laughs> Just have, you know, physical specimens. You know, intellects that that combine with that, that they know you know how to get to you and how to hit you and how to hurt you and so forth. And when you do, when you do things for money, it just it puts such a, an intense focus. And guys try so much harder. And the people that are are there are bigger and stronger and faster. So at first, you know, and I look back at my career when it's over, I was, I was trying to conceptualize it. And at first, I felt like I was a target. And I felt like I was like the missile range, you know, where all these missiles were hitting me. And I yeah. just was a little bit slower than they were uh, as far as, you know, reactions and so forth. And then I got to a part of my career where uh, I felt like I had mastered it. And I would look around and go, why are these guys so slow today? Wow. You know, even even if we lost the game 40 to nothing, I would, I would look at it and go, why are both sides so darn slow? And then it turned around. I felt like I was the missile, and I was hitting targets, and there was nobody hitting me or rarely hitting me. Did you learn a lot more technique as a defensive lineman in the pros than you were taught at the collegiate level? I did. In, in fact, I, I felt like I didn't have a lot of technique uh, taught to me in high school. In junior college, I started to pick up some technique. For whatever reason, in college, four-year school, I felt like they took a step back and they weren't as good as the junior college folks. Hmm. And then in, in professional football, I had like a perfect coach. He had played in the NFL for the Giants on championship team. His name was Dick Mojoleski. And oh, I yeah. Still as a mentor, uh, you know, throughout my career. And like he was like the guy that said, you know, get your rear end off of the, you know, up in the air like a sprinter. And when you're on the defensive line, move on the snap of the ball. And he also said, play every play like it's a pass play, because on a pass play, you have to go get somebody. On a run play, they have to get by you. and You're going you're, you're gonna to be standing there. Well, that made all the sense in the world. And so that's how I crafted my style. And, and after two or three years, I got it, and it worked. Did you collect football cards when you were a kid? You know, I can't remember football cards so much, but uh, baseball baseball cards, I, I collected a few. But I can remember, you know, just being in Grants Pass and there were no, you know, the nearest sports team was the San Francisco 49ers. Right. Seems like of any type of professional team. So professional sports was almost like something they did in another world or another country. Yeah. Really, really, uh, you know, a big dream for... 
Jerry Shirk, my guest. And Jerry, uh, the reason I asked the football card question was it's got to be pretty amazing to uh, to wind up playing against people that perhaps you've watched on TV in previous years or collected a sports memorabilia card that had their picture on it. Is it uh, pretty amazing to see some of these people for the first time and realize that you are on the same playing field they are and you're supposed to uh, lay some hurt on these people? Right. Yeah, yeah it, it really was. You know, My first game uh, as a rookie was the first, Monday night game ever played, and I started a defensive tackle, and uh, we were playing Joe Namath and the Jets, and they, of course, they a couple years before they had they had won the Super Bowl, which led to the merger of the two leagues, and Joe Namath was such a big deal. But I can remember being on the field with uh, we played Baltimore a couple times at the end of Johnny Unitas's career. Wow! And I never sacked him, but I hit him once or twice after the play, and I can remember thinking, I me, Jerry Shirk, just hit Johnny Unitas. <laughs> <laughs> that had to be great. Hey, did you uh, put a hand on Broadway, Joe? You know, I did. Uh, but kind of a funny aspect to this story is it was Howard Cosell's first game. And for your older listeners, they probably remember mm-hmm. Howard Cosell, and uh, he was broadcasting with uh, um, uh, Meredith, the quarterback, from the Cowboys and uh, Keith Jackson. So before the game, he interviewed Namath and asked him what he was going to do. And Namath said, I'm going to run at the rookie, Jerry Shirk. Really? Number 72 from Oklahoma State. And so Cosell, because nobody knew Cosell then as far as a football broadcaster, uh, he would do what he typically did his whole career. He would pick something out, and he would just harp on it the whole game. So uh, they started having some success in the late, in the second quarter, and in the second half. And no matter who missed the tackle, according to Cosell, it was always me. (laughs) 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 So I, Mike, one of my claims to fame, you know, and it was painful back then because I got a lot of negative publicity after that first game. But uh, one of my claims to fame, and, and just kind of a fun story now, is I was Howard Cosell's first goat. Yeah, how about that? That's that's a great thing to be, I guess, in retrospect, you know? Yeah, it's a good story now. Yeah, it is. It's a great story. Um, What was it like to play in the city of Cleveland? I mean, you know, I gather just as a kid watching the game, uh, Cleveland really loved the Browns, didn't they, during that time? They really did. In fact, uh, I was uh, just going through some some old write-ups about the Browns online. I was searching around, and it was like my second or third year um, when we lost quite a few games. I think we were 4-10 and ten or something like that. I, I read that that was only the second losing season in Cleveland Browns history. And they've been around since 1946. And I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, I helped make history. Yeah. <laughs> second, <laughs> losing, second losing team. But there was, there was uh, you know, so much support for the team. They were just part of the fabric. And it's not like, you know, living in Grants Pass or someplace where you can walk outdoors and things are, you know, beautiful and wonderful and you can go hunting and fishing and, yeah. you know, driving around the mountains and so forth. It's uh, There are parts of Cleveland that are just kind of blighted. So people really took to the, the football team. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, Paul Brown was there before I got there. He was the coach and the namesake of the Browns. And basically, uh, he invented modern pro football and the fans knew it that he had been at the playbook he was the first person to film practices and games uh they invented the draw play on his watch uh the, the first speaker to go in a quarterback's helmet although it picked they had to stop because it picked up a local taxi cab company <laughs> 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 um, 